Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you for another day in your house to study at your feet, to learn from you, and to, you know, receive grace so that we can be who you want us to be. We ask, Lord, that as we have come this evening, your word will be powerful and bring transformation in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Sing, amen, rejoice, amen, glory be to God, amen. Let us sing, amen, rejoice, amen, glory be to God, amen. Let us sing, rejoice. Oh, yes, glory be in my life. God, be glorified, be glorified in my life. God, be glorified today. God be glorified. Be glorified, oh yes. In God be glorified today. Lord be glorified. My heart, God be glorified. Oh, yes. I have a father, almighty father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father, what about you? Oh, yes. Yes, he. I have a father. I have a father. Almighty father. He is king of kings and lord of lords. I have a father, what about you? Oh, yes, yes, he. I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Yes, I have joy like a river, joy like a river. Joy like a river in my soul, in my soul. Oh, yes, joy. I have joy. Yes, in my soul. Oh, yes, joy. Yes, joy. Yes, in my soul I have joy, oh yes, joy. Yes, in my soul I have joy, oh yes, joy. Yes, I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Yes, I have joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul, in my soul. 
Yes, joy, I have joy. Yes, joy. Hold my hands, dear Lord. Hold my hands. Make me strong, Lord. Make me stand. I've come a long way, Lord. I've a long way to go. Hold my hands, dear Lord. Make me stand. Make me stand. Hold my hands, Lord, yes. I've come a long way, Lord. Hold my hands, hold my hands, dear Lord. Yes, hold my hands. Yes, make me stand. Hey. We are all welcome to the Bible study this evening in Jesus' name. Particularly, we want to welcome those who are coming into our midst for the very first time, our visitors, our converts, our invitees. Wherever you are seated in the congregation, we want to recognize you as well as bring our pastor greetings to you so if you are there in our midst can you signify by raising up your hand very quickly wherever you are seated in the hall can you signify by raising up your hand okay, you are all welcome into our midst in Jesus name our general superintendent is very happy that you are in our midst tonight to study the word of God with us and he will want me to tell you that you should keep coming with us. And uh, I believe, God, that as you keep coming, the blessings of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Our ushers are by your side. They will give you a sleep to fill. We want you to collect the sleep from them. Uh, fill the information required very legibly and uh, with capital letters. And make sure that the field uh, uh, sleep is returned back unto them. Weekly meetings. By the grace of God, we have three important meetings in the church. We come together on Mondays like this. Mondays are, like this are noted for our systematic and expository study of the word of the Lord. And it is a time we study uh, precept upon precept, line upon line here a little and there a little. Great has been the depth of knowledge the Lord has been granting unto us each time we come for our Monday Bible study. And uh, the unique thing is that the Monday Bible study is being handled personally by our general superintendent. Uh, on the 19th of uh, February, that is next Monday, we shall be having Old Mushin District joining a bedroom from Old Bagada, K2, and Shomolu for their own Bible study. Tuesday meeting. Tuesday leadership and development meeting will be coming up here tomorrow by 5.15. All our Tuesday leaders are being reminded. Supernatural night of wonders. Every first and third Thursdays of the month, 
we have the supernatural night of wonders with our pastor, the general superintendent, ministering unto us. We thank God for the mighty visitation of uh, the fortnight uh, program that we had. But I'm telling you, the one coming this Thursday, the Bible says the glory of the latter shall be greater than that of the former. Our service group two will be coming here to witness another time of miracle, another time of signs and wonders. We encourage that we invite people, bring the lame, bring all those people that are having challenges. And by the grace of God, just like in the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 8, the Bible said the whole city was full with joy. And that is going to happen here again this coming Thursday in Jesus' name. Because of this reason, uh, prayers and publicity for the program should be intensified and every, in every neighborhood, including all the people, let me show that we bring them around. On Wednesday, we are going to be rounding up our prayer and fasting with uh, a prayer meeting on group of this uh, group of district uh, basis. It's going to be by 6 o'clock in the evening. Sunday worship service. Next Sunday, the 18th February 2024, service group 2 will be coming here for their uh, combined worship service. The time is 7.45 a.m. in the morning. Global Crusade. The GCK, the February edition, and by the grace of God, I call the February edition a special edition. Amen? The February edition of the GCK will be coming up from the 22nd to the 27th uh, of uh, February, Tuesday, 27th of February, 2024. And the theme for this program is Prevailing Prayers. And I believe that if Jacob prayed and prevailed in prayer, and Jabez prayed and prevailed, you will pray. I will pray, and we will prevail in prayers in Jesus' name. Can I have a better amen? If you are expectant, another amen. Please, let's make sure that we walk all through for the publicity of the program, and we also map out strategy to conserve all the converts that the Lord will be giving to us. During this program, we are going to have the minister's conference uh, that is uh, the themed uh, staying faithful amid the end-time ministry. And of course, it will also be featuring the Success Academy for all our teenagers, our campus student cop members, and the young adults. Uh, that will be coming up on the 24th of uh, of uh, of February 2021. Success with integrity. Please, let's make sure that we continue with the publicity. And in fact, every member of the church is expected to bring at least two invitees for this program. I believe God that as we do, the blessings of the Lord will be upon our lives in Jesus' name. We now rise up as we sing together from our gospel hymns and songs. A gospel hymns and song will be taken from hymn number 246. Hymn 246. O oh, brother, life's journey beginning with courage and firmness arrive. Look well to the cause that thou art chosen. Be honest, be watchful and wise. Remember two parts are before thee. And both the attention invite, but one leaded on to destruction, the other to joy and delight. Oh, brother, yield not to the tempter. No matter what others may do, stay firm in the strength of the master. Be loyal, be faithful and true. Each trial will make you the stronger. If you, in the name of the Lord, fight manfully under your leader, obeying the voice of his word. Oh, brother. The Savior is calling. Beware of the danger of sin. Resist not the voice of the Spirit that whispers so gently within. God calls you to enter His service 
to live for him here day by day and share by and by in the glory that never shall vanish away. God give you, God help you to follow his banner and serve him wherever you go. And when you are tempted, my brother, God give you grace to say no.
today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. The fourth book of Moses, called Numbers. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you. Of the tribe of Reuben, Eliza the son of Shediah, of Simeon, Shalumiel the son of Zurishaddai, of Judah, Nashan the son of Aminadab, of Issachar, Nethaniel the son of Zuar, of Zebulun, Eliab the son of Helan, of the children of Joseph, of Ephraim, Elishama the son of Amahad, of Manasseh, Gamaliel the son of Padazu, of Benjamin, Abidon the son of Gideoni, of Dan, Ahiza the son of Amishaddai, of Asher, Pagiel the son of Akron, of Gad, Eliasif the son of Duel, of Naphtali, Ahira the son of Enan. These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, by their poles. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Simeon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Simeon, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Of the children of Gad, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Gad, were forty and five thousand six hundred and fifty. Of the children of Judah, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Judah, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. Of the children of Issachar, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Issachar, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Zebulun, by their generations, after their families, 
by the house of their fathers according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Zebulun, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Joseph, namely of the children of Ephraim, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Ephraim, were forty thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Manasseh, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Manasseh, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Of the children of Benjamin, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Benjamin, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Dan, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Dan, were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred. Of the children of Asher, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Asher, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Naphtali, throughout their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Naphtali, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. These are those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel, being twelve men, each one was for the house of his fathers. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Even all they that were numbered were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites after the tribe of their fathers were not numbered among them. For the Lord had spoken unto Moses, saying, only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard throughout their hosts. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony, and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. Chapter 2 And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And on the east side toward the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies, and Nashon, the son of Aminadab, shall be captain of the children of Judah. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. And those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar, and Nethaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar, and his host and those that were numbered thereof were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. 
then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliab, the son of Helan, shall be captain of the children of Zebulun. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were an hundred thousand and fourscore thousand and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben according to their armies. And the captain of the children of Reuben shall be Eliza the son of Shedir. And his host and those that were numbered thereof were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitch by him shall be the tribe of Simeon. And the captain of the children of Simeon shall be Shalumiel, the son of Zurishaddai. And his host and those that were numbered of them were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad and the captain of the sons of Gad shall be Eliaseph, the son of Ruel. And his host and those that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were an hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand and four hundred and fifty throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward, every man in his place by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim according to their armies, and the captain of the sons of Ephraim shall be Elishama the son of Amahud, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty thousand and five hundred. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel the son of Pedazah, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Then the tribe of Benjamin, and the captain of the sons of Benjamin shall be Abidan the son of Gideoni, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were an hundred thousand and eight thousand and an hundred throughout their armies, and they shall go forward in the third rank. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies, and the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahiza the son of Amishaddai, and his host and those that were numbered of them were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher, and the captain of the children of Asher shall be Pagio the son of Akron, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Then the tribe of Naphtali, and the captain of the children of Naphtali shall be Ahira the son of Enan, and his host, and those that were numbered of them, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were an hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. These are those which were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their hosts were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward, every one after their families, according to the house of their fathers. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We remain standing as we give our tithe and offering unto the Lord. Before we give a read from Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruit of all thine increase, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and the presses shall burst out with new wine. Whatever you have come with, 
before the Lord this evening. We want you to dip your hands into your pocket and bag, and raise up your tithe and offering as we pray before we offer them unto the Lord. Father, we want to appreciate your name. Thank you because of the much you have provided for us, out of which we have brought this little token unto you. We ask and pray that this will be acceptable before you in Jesus' name. As many that will have love to give, but they don't have, uh, they have none, we pray that you will open the windows of heaven so that when next we come together, they will be opportunity to give unto you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answer to prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's drop our tithe and offering into the bag that being passed around by our leaders and our ushers. Ensure you are not passed by. Thank you.
by thy power, Savior, make me free from the weakness that enfeebles me. Hold my failing hand, help me firm to stand. Draw me to a closer walk with me. By the power, Savior, make me free. For the weakness that enables me. Hold my failing hand, help me firm to stand. Draw me to a closer walk with me. We now bring you choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
Church said, I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. It's always a joy when we come together and we learn together, and the power of the word works in every life. It will work more in your life. It's working already. Say, it's working already to work more in our lives in Jesus' name. I want to remind you once again, all these empty seats down here, down there, I want to fill them up every Monday. Monday Bible study is our Bible school. I mean, Bible school for all the members. And we go from chapter to chapter, verse to verse, and book to book. And by the time you come a number of times, you'll be a preacher yourself. It may be better. Amen. Amen. You know, as I get older, I want to go through thoroughly what we have in the Bible so that as um, I don't mean I'm going now, not time yet. I said it's not time yet. But as things are going on, I'll be finding a brother there, sister there, and I might even uh, try and sit down here and say, today you will teach. You will do it. Father, we thank you today and we bless your name for calling us into this solemn assembly to read your word, to learn your word, and to be impacted by your word. I'm asking, O oh Lord, that you touch every heart today and make us the man, the woman, the brother, the, the sister, the minister we ought to be in Jesus' name. And we pray that your word will not fall on the ground. It will fall in the fertile ground of our hearts in Jesus' name. Lift up your people. Give us more understanding that will go forth and do the work you've called us to do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Your amen looks very good. You want to say another amen? We're coming to James chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 13. James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Verse 15, it says, Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. 
verse 16 it says be uh, do not err my beloved brethren tonight we're looking at uh, the study under this title believers vigilance and victory over temptation 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 will come temptation is there there's a devil in the world and there are spirits in the world and there are men and women in the world that would like to tempt the believer to sin in therefore we need to understand how do we overcome how do we triumph how do we have the victory the believers vigilance and victory over temptation there are three things we're looking at here number one revelation of the source and the violation of temptation temptation violates people violates their right violates their peace of mind and violates their their decision they want to go this direction in the right direction and here comes the tempter with his temptation to violate them and we need to know the source of such violation number two the ruinousness that is when when something ruins and destroys and scatters somebody's life the ruinousness of succumbing voluntarily to temptation number three resources for the saints victory over temptation saints victory over temptation young or old we're connected with the lord and we have the salvation of our soul and that connection is still there that conversion is still valid we are the saints of god we're going to overcome if you were defeated in the past the days of victory they have come for you they have come for me looks like you are not excited tonight the kind of amen you are giving is like amen yeah. let's look at number one number one revelation of the source and violation of temptation three things we're looking at here number one the regrettable statement on the temptation of the subjects the subjects are the citizens in the kingdom and they are the subject of the king of kings and the lord of laws and for anyone to say i'm being tempted of god that is a regrettable statement number two revealed source of temptation to sin when god tests us that's not temptation that's just testing to test to understand to to bring out our strength our value and to bring out our consecration he can test us even though the word the old english word uh, from king james version might say that god did tempt abraham really he tested abraham to know his consecration and to know his mind of following him but when it comes to tempting to sin in the work of the devil, the revealed source of temptation to sin. Number three, the root and the root, that is the second root there, is the pathway. Is the, is the, is the road that uh, from temptation to sinfulness. Let's look at number one. Number one, the regrettable statement on the temptation of subjects. We're looking at James chapter one, reading from verse 13. James one, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. That's the regrettable statement that anyone can say that God is tempting him or tempting her to sin. He loves everyone. How would you tempt? How will you destroy the person you love? He gave Jesus Christ for us that he might set us free from sin. How will he at the same time tempt us 
to sin and he has said the soul that sinneth it shall die and he's not willing that anyone should die but that all shall come to repentance I will I will the God of love and the God of life how will he then tempt us to evil it's a regrettable statement that anybody can make that God is tempting him that's why the Bible says let no man no man here no man there no man in the past generation no man in the present generation no man even in the world God does not tempt them if he's going to judge them for their sin how will he at the same time tempt them to commit sin in the world in the church among the young among the old anyone anywhere it is not God that tempts us it says let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man we're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 3 Genesis chapter 3 we're looking at verse 11 and he said who told thee that thou wast naked as thou eating of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat look at verse 12 it said the man and the man said the woman whom thou givest me to be with me she gave me of the tree and I did eat it's not God that brought the temptation and it's an God did not create Eve, make her the wife of Adam so that she can, he can fall. No, I will make him and help meet for him. The purpose of God, the intention of God is that the wife will help the man, keep the man protect the man and will sustain the man with all the grace and all the strength that she could have. But the serpent came, Satan came and tempted Eve and Eve succumbed and Satan put it in the heart of Eve to also give to the husband. That is how the temptation, how the thing came. In Isaiah chapter 63, reading from verse 17, it says, O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? That the wrong statement of those people, once again, they said, God, you made us err. You made us go astray. You made us do evil. You made us depart from your way. How can God do that? God has said, stand ye in the ways and ask and know where is the good way the old way and walk ye in it the same God that calls us to walk in the right way how can he then lead us astray out of the way it's a misstatement a regrettable statement by anyone the subjects of the king of kings to say you made us err from thy ways and you hardened our heart from thy fear. God doesn't harden anybody's heart. He is the one that actually takes away the stony heart and he gives all the heart of flesh. And the same God that calls us and he says, I will cleanse you, I will wash you from all your filthiness, and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and give you the heart of flesh. That same God cannot contradict himself and make our heart hard towards him. Return for thy servant's sake and the tribes of thine inheritance. And so we understand God does not tempt us. If temptation comes, it's coming from Satan. And if it ever comes to you, you'll overcome in Jesus' name. In Job chapter 31, reading from verse 33, if I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. And Job is telling us that actually what happened to Adam is that he was covering up. 
he was given excuse and that excuse did not stand and Job said I will not do that I will not accuse God that is the one tempting me look at number two here number two we're looking at the revealed source of temptation to sin we need to know who is the personality that actually tempts people to sin in in Luke chapter 4 reading from verse 2 Luke chapter 4 verse 2 being 40 days tempted of the devil you see that the father did not tempt the son God in heaven did not tempt Jesus is only begotten son. The Holy Ghost did not tempt uh, the son of God, Jesus Christ. It was the devil because Christ came to this world to save. He came to this world so that he will recover the kingdom from the devil. And that's what God sent him for. And he said, I want to do your will. Lo, I am here. Look, I come to do your will. The same God that wants him to do the will of the Heavenly Father cannot tempt him not to do it. It says uh, 40 days he was tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, And the devil said, unto him if thou be the son of god command this stone that it be made bread very clear is the devil that tempts whenever you have any temptation is the devil that brings the temptation and he has a goal he wants you to fall he wants you to compromise he wants you to sin so that as see as a means heaven and he knows he's not going to heaven and he knows it's a short time it will soon be in hell he says i don't want to be there alone he wants to gather all the sons and the, and the daughters of men he wants to gather them with him i will not go with him first chronicles chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 1 first chronicles chapter 21 verse 1 and satan stood up against israel and provoked david to number israel again we're told it's satan it's the devil it's lucifer it's the adversary it's the accuser of the brethren that does that Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Underline that word, provoke. When there is you know, something happening and uh, you know that thing rubs the wrong direction with you and there is a fuming from within. And there is some um, anger from within and there's uprising from within and it's like you should rise up and go and do something wrong it may be something of the flesh it may be something like fighting it may be like confrontation whatever it is that something you know, is rising up in you as it get up get up get up and go and confront them that's provocation please remember that provocation is of the devil and that provocation is of satan you will not obey satan i will not obey satan look at acts of the apostle chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 3 acts chapter 5 verse 3 peter said ananias why has satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. When there is a tendency to tell a lie, to deceive, and to pretend as if this is that, but you know it is wrong. And between his house and the sanctuary where Peter was, all through that land, the thing was telling him, tell him, tell him, tell him the lie, deceive him. And then they say they have gifts of the spirit and the word of knowledge, go and test them. Whether they will say, praise the Lord, you brought this large amount. Now, 
the devil knew that Peter, the apostle, had the gift of the word of knowledge. And that Peter will know. But he wanted to destroy Ananias. I wanted to destroy Sapphira, the, the wife. That's the reason why all the time he was going from his house. He was going to the sanctuary, to the temple or wherever to meet Peter. The devil kept on whispering, remember, remember, uh, you need to have a real recognition. And eventually Peter said, Ananias, why? At this time of revival, why? At this time when the Holy Ghost came up and he is really baptizing people and feeling people and were being revived, why? At such a time like this, healing is taking place, deliverance is taking place, and the power of the Lord moving in a way we've never seen before. Why is it at this time Satan feels thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Was it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You have not lied unto man, but you have lied unto God. That, 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 that the trick of the devil, he says, is an ordinary man, a man like yourself. What's his name? Peter. Go and tell him, are you fearing Peter? Are you fearing his special appearance? Is he not a man like yourself? No. You have not lied unto man, but you have lied unto God. The devil will make people to think he's just a man. Call him pastor. He's just a man. Call him apostle. He's just a man. Call him director. He's just a man. And the devil will say it doesn't matter. Lying to an ordinary man. And they will give them a reason for telling the lie but Peter set him straight and said no you are not lying to me you are lying unto God and you know what happened he died right there we're looking at first Corinthians chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 5 we're being told by the scriptures very clearly that Satan is the source of temptation to sin it says in first Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5 the fraud ye not one the other i wanted to underline that word the fraud when somebody practices fraud and he cheats the other person in business and he tries to do 419 and he tries to get money out of another person by craft by cunning method they call it fraud and if he does hit he's accused of defrauding Another person now is talking about husband and wife, and he is uh, saying, Defraud ye not one the other. That he is uh, the, uh, the husband has a right to the wife, the wife has a right to the husband. And when you know the, the wife is always saying, I'm tired, I'm weak. I'm feeling sleepy. I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm even sick. You will not be sick in Jesus' name. And then you deny your husband. Or it's the husband denying the wife that she, you know, at this, uh, at this age now, I think you should understand that the body is no more as fresh as it used to be. And he's always giving excuse and he's pushing the woman to go out and do whatever and if the woman does that she yields to temptation and and then if the woman comes to say my husband look at what i uh -huh, we're going to tell the pastor we're good but you are the one that pushed her out the word of god is saying very clearly defraud ye not one the other except it be with consent for a time that she may give yourselves to fasting 
hand to prayer and come together again and come together again that satan tempt you not temptation is the work of satan satan will not get you satan will not get me it says so that satan tempts you not for your incontinency that is for your uh, inconsistency and you are going apart apart and apart and you are more familiar with men outside than you are familiar with your husband when those men when they call you outside and you talk talk and talk that time you are not tired that time you are not weak that time you are not sick it's when your own husband the closest person to you and the one the lord has given you that you will fulfill god's will with him that the time you are tired or maybe it's the man the man is always tired he's always tired uh, can we be together tonight i'm sorry I'm, you know i'm tired you know me now i'm the weaker vessel but when other men call you from outside and you talk and talk and talk on the phone and nowadays they even use a zoom and they see what and you find the woman laughing laughing and you say but this woman said she was tired no it's the temptation of the devil the lord deliver us from the devil in jesus name he will not get you I said they will not get you if you're in the habit of, you know, being pushing your husband away, pushing your wife away, and you are closer to men outside, closer to women outside, talk and talk and talk without stopping, even, even at night. At the time, you should even, you know, say the, the man calling you from outside, you understand. The woman calling you from outside, you know, look at the time. I should release that woman. I should release that man to be in his family. They don't do that. You're yielding to temptation. The Lord deliver you in Jesus' name. Point number three there. Number three, we're looking at the root. The root of temptation and the root, they call it drought in other places. The drought from temptation to sinfulness we're looking at james chapter one james chapter one i'm reading from verse 14 but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own laws and entice that's the root that's what brings the temptation is drawn away is led away of his own lost and entice and then in verse 15 it says but then when lost as conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death we're looking at um, and we're looking at that and it says this is how it comes how temptation comes and how people yield and surrender to temptation joshua chapter 7 reading from verse 21 joshua chapter 7 verse 21 when i saw that's where it begins through the eye gauge when i saw among the spoils a goodly babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight then i coveted number one i saw now you can see something accidentally like um, david saw Bathsheba washing herself and she he saw her nakedness accidentally but now thinking about that what he saw and ruminating on that what he saw and appreciating what he saw and desiring what he saw that is where the problem of temptation begins now in the world in which we live there is so much you are searching for an information on the on the net wikipedia or whatever and all of a sudden something comes up that's accidental you didn't bring that one up but you appreciate that 
you look at that you gaze at that you think of that and it's really bringing passion and uh, sensuality from your heart and you keep on looking at that now that's beyond just accidentally seeing something or it may be that you know some of uh, these things that come up and uh, you know and you stay there and you're looking into that and you know it is wrong how do you know it's wrong if um, you know it's in the night and your husband happens to be coming along you find a way to cleverly cover it up now if it's not sinful why are you covering it up and or if your wife is coming and you say you know i don't want this woman to see that because i'm saved i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost i don't want her to see that this is what i'm watching and then you cleverly uh, you know stop that close that or are you deceiving it's no more accidentally you saw and then you coveted and it says and you i took them i saw i coveted and i took and it says behold they are they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver and under each as well we're looking at um, hebrews chapter 12 uh, hebrews chapter 3 rather hebrews chapter 3 we're looking at verse 12 it says take each brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God temptation if you yield to temptation it makes you to depart from the living God it tells us in verse 13 in verse 13 but exhort one another and daily while it is called today less any of you be hiding through the deceitfulness of sin verse 14 it says for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Hold the beginning of your faith, of your confidence, of your consecration steadfast unto the end. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the ruinousness of succumbing voluntarily to temptation the ruinousness of succumbing voluntarily nobody is forcing it on you in fact even the phones we use we can control our phone and if you see that something comes in and you know that that source is always sending something to you that will pollute your mind that will defile your mind you know already that that is what you are going to see if you open it can't you shut it up can't you block that side and say i will not yield to that or if it's a man the man is always coming i'm talking physically now it's always coming and you know that whenever he comes he has something in his lips it's going to introduce something it's going to say something it's going to drag you to something you know, that eventually you might not be able to shake off he wants to visit you and every time he visits you know if jesus came at such a time with that pollution with that defilement you will miss heaven because it says that was heard thou shalt not commit adultery but if you look on a woman to lust after her you've committed it already in your heart if you look on a man to lust after him you've done it already in your heart and so you understand if a messenger of satan if a tempter if a temptress is coming to you there's no point saying what can i do now shut your door uh, getting to heaven is not child's play you have to say here is where i stand and that is how to overcome you will overcome i will overcome the lord confirm it to your life in jesus name if you succumb it brings 
this because it tells us in James chapter 1 reading from verse 14 but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own laws and enticed in verse 15 in verse 15 it says then when lost as conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 18, reading from verse 30. Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Therefore, I will, I, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin if you yield it ruins you it destroys you it pulls you away from the kingdom of god and it puts you in the direction of going to that other side where you don't want to go three things we're looking at number one number one spiritual death of all who are living and succumbing on that temptation. Number two, such death of the lifestyle of surrendering to temptation. Number three is the second death after a lifetime of yielding to temptation. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at spiritual death of all who live and succumb under temptation. Uh, look at uh, chapter 7 of the Psalms. Psalms chapter 7. And we're reading here from verse 11. It says, God judges the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. Do you know, when you go in the direction of wickedness, yielding to temptation, God is angry with you you might you know call him good names great names and praise him but if you are succumbing to temptation and you know it is temptation because it's always dragging you down or maybe apart from being temptation to you that interaction with that other person is bringing temptation to him or bringing temptation to her and as you do that god is angry with the wicked every day it tells us in uh, verse 14 in verse 14 behold he traveled with iniquity and he has conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood we're looking at isaiah chapter 59 and i'm reading from verse 2 but your iniquities have separated you between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear it hinders a prayer because the spiritual death spiritual death means your soul is separated from god it means your whole personality is separated from god because of your sin it tells us in first timothy chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 6 first timothy chapter 5 we're looking at verse 6 it says she that liveth in pleasure is dead separated from god while she liveth she that liveth in pleasure you understand uh, recently when we spoke about him um, about salvation about justification we said the salvation from the power of sin the salvation from the pollution of sin the salvation from the pleasure of sin if you derive pleasure sinful pleasure fleshly pleasure in what you're doing you're yielding to temptation 
and it's dead, spiritual dead, because she that liveth in pleasure, the pleasure of the flesh, and the pleasure in your emotion, and the pleasure in your feeling, although other people may not know, but you know that you derive pleasure from that temptation, and you're yielding to that she or he that liveth in pleasure is dead, separated from God, while she liveth. The Lord purge every one of us completely in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two, sad death for the lifestyle of surrendering to temptation. Sad death. We read about an answer already. Sad death. Sudden death. We read about Sapphire the wife. Sad death. Sudden death. And uh, you, uh, you look at Acts chapter 12. In Acts chapter 12, we're reading from verse 21. Acts 12, verse 21. And upon his said day, Herod a rage in royal apparel sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. Verse 22, in verse 22, and the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. That the temptation, they wanted him to, you know, pump up himself, lift up himself, and they wanted him to accept you are a God. You are not just a man. And the temptation came and he fell for the temptation. Look at the next verse in verse 23. It says, And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he, he gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. Uh, we're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 10. Verse 27, it says, The fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Because they yield to temptation, yield to temptation. They don't know how to say no to Satan, say no to the devil, say no to the tempter, say no to the temptress. And they cut short their own lives. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. In Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 27, and as it is appointed unto men, wants to die. But after this, the judgment. After this judgment, when somebody dies here, sad death, that because of the temptation to go, to push, to drive, to move here, to move there, and unfortunately, he destroys his, his, himself. He dies suddenly. His sad death is going to face the Lord in eternity. Look at number three. Number three, we're looking at the second death after a lifetime of yielding to temptation. Yielding to temptation. Let me ask you. You say you're born again. You have a lifestyle of yielding to temptation. Do you ever say no to that thing drawing you, dragging you, attracting you? Do you ever say no to that thing that is of the flesh? Do you ever say no to that thing that is weakening you and weakening you? No matter how much you pray and no matter how far you go in consecration, when that thing comes, do you ever say no? The people who don't know how to say no and the people who don't check their mind, they don't check their heart and they don't check their propensity to sucking in evil. There's going to be spiritual death. There's going to be sad death. And there's going to be the second death after a lifetime of just yielding and yielding and yielding to temptation. And look at uh, the word of God in James chapter 1, reading from verse 15. Then when lost as conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished, bring it forth death. Bring it forth death. In the first Chronicles chapter 10, 
first chronicles chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 13 so saul died for his transgression which he committed against the lord even against the word of the lord which he kept not and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. This was the Saul, the king. When he came to the throne, he searched for all the witches and the wizards and all the necromancers and all the people that dealt with familiar spirit and, ex and they got them out of the land. After a person had so consecrated, himself and that everybody knew now he got a problem and he wanted solution and he said go look for me and search for a witch somebody having familiar spirit and when they got this witch of endor she reminded them you know so you know how he drove everyone away you want to endanger my life no soul had changed it's not the same man of conviction as it was when he came on the throne. Many people like that, they have changed. The things they will not touch. Many years ago, the things they will not taste. Many years ago, the things they will not come near. Many years ago, the things they will run away from. Many years ago, today, they befriend them. They go along with them. And their lives are totally changed like Saul. And we're told God then smote him and killed him for his transgression. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and inquired not of the Lord, therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. I pray God will preserve our lives, preserve our consecration, that the vomit that we, have, that we have given up before, we don't go back again like the dog to swallow up a, a vomit anymore in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 8. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. For the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, and the armongers, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars. Please remember that, white lie. All liars, professional lies, all liars, they were trained in their field that whenever this happens and your director asks you, tell him a lie. They say it's for the profession. But all liars, or maybe lying in the family, that you know the wife is lying to the husband, and the husband is lying to the wife, I'm telling him that lie because you know he has hypertension. And if I tell him the right thing, his is blood pressure will shoot up. He might die. My sister, that's an excuse. If you are going to tell the truth, tell the truth if you want to get to heaven those who trade in line and those who kind of the merchandise of line they will not get to heaven all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with brimstone and then there are people uh, well this work uh, there's no work now in the country and if i tell the management the real truth about this I will lose my job. If I lose my job, how do I try to get another job? And because of that, they told a lie, they cover that lie with another lie. And when you're about to discover that, they cover it with another lie. You might keep your job. You might not keep the job, even with the lie, because God is on the throne. He can still make you to be suspended or to be dismissed, even if you told the lie. But the point is, whether you keep the job, you don't keep the job, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire 
and brimstone, which is the second death. The people that should not go about, all they can do is, I saw you talking to the pastor. I hope you didn't tell him the right thing about that thing we did and about that thing we're covering up. Please don't get me to trouble. Never tell the pastor or anybody that can tell him that this is what happened and to a liar and you're covering up the lie and you're influencing another person to cover up the lie but please remember please remember the fearful i'm afraid what will happen if i tell the truth and the unbelieving i don't believe god can protect me if i tell the truth and the abominable you've done abominable things instead of confessing so that you can be cleansed and you can be washed abominable you're still into that thing and all murderers and all mongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and with brimstone which is the second death was the second death the final separation from the almighty god all through eternity it is the death of death the death of death in our studies in mathematics when you say d times d we say that is d squared death of death you know that word of when you want to really calculate you remove that of and you put times so death of death death times death d squared is the second death final there is no coming back from there that's the reason why if you're a real child of god whatever temptation comes i say no i say no and look at verse 27 in verse 27 and there shall in no wise enter into it any sin that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie or manufactures a lie or creates a lie but only they which are written in the lamb's book of life we come to point number three now point number three resources for the saints victory over temptation the resources we have the strength we have the conviction we have the ability we have so that we overcome temptation temptation coming from any direction temptation coming from maybe your flesh Maybe your loss, maybe your pride of life, maybe your surrounding, maybe your habit, maybe from other people, we will have a victory. I will have the victory confirmed in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, God, a protector and preserver from temptation. Number two, grace, a portion and power over temptation. Number three, godliness through prayer and perseverance against temptation. Look at number one. Number one, God, a protector. God, a preserver from temptation. In Genesis chapter 20, I'm reading here from verse 3. Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast, hast taken, for she is a man's wife. I, I think you might know the story. Actually, um, Abraham was now getting old and old and old. And uh, Sarah, the wife, was also old, old, old. But she still looked pretty. And so Abraham told Sarah, anywhere we go, you know, these uh, unbelieving uh, kings, no matter how many women they have to their record, they still want, uh, you know, people like you. So tell him, uh, tell them, uh, you're my sister. 
it was actually Abraham that planted that lie in Sarah. And so they got together and they were asking, and Sarah said, I'm his sister. Oh, if you're a sister, I'd like to, you know, get married to you. And she didn't say no. And God had promised that he was going to give the promised son to Abraham and Sarah. And so uh, Abimelech took uh, Sarah. Now, they had not slept together. He has not touched her. People say, what did I do? Have I touched her? Have I had canon knowledge of her now? Abimelech had not had what you call canon knowledge, but God came to him and said, by taking another man's wife, by taking her interest away from the husband, away from the home, and you keep her with you, you are a dead man. You see, God is serious about sin. And he, he doesn't measure, he doesn't interpret sin like we human beings interpret sin. He interprets it from the notion coming from heaven. He said, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart. He said, God, I'm righteous. That's what he thought. But the righteous man is going to die the death of a sinner. The man told me, I was working on his information. He told me that this woman was a sister. And I worked on that, yet you worked on a lie. And yet you are going to die because sin is sin. There's no excuse before the Lord. And then it goes on to say, I know that thou didst age in the integrity of thine heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. I stopped you. I protected you. I prevented you from going into that woman because she is a woman of covenant. And the husband is a man of covenant. Even though God protected him, he now told him the truth that this one will kill you and kill your whole family and if you die in that condition i am righteous i am righteous i am saved i'm sanctified i didn't touch her i didn't do anything if you die in that condition god said you die and you will go to a lost eternity i also withheld thee from sinning against me therefore suffered i thee not to touch her and then in verse 7 in verse 7 it says now therefore restore the man his wife for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee and thou shalt live and if thou restore her not if thou restore her not if you say uh, well, from what he told me, what have I done wrong? If you restore her not, if you don't get her back to her husband so that she can be with her husband 100%. Not that you and Abraham are sharing her together. If you don't restore her, you will thou know thou that thou shalt surely die thou and all that are thine. Thank God the man woke up early in the morning and restored Sarah, his wife. And Abraham prayed for him and they did not die. I will not die. But if you are tossing with another man's wife, judgment is coming. If you are playing games with another woman's husband, judgment is coming the lord preserve us from every form of sin 
in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two here. Number two, grace, our portion and power over temptation. The grace of God is available. And God has so worked it out that no matter the temptation and no matter the challenge, he will give us abundant grace, enough grace we overcome in Jesus' name. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. That's what the Lord is telling you tonight. My grace is sufficient for thee. His grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ will rest upon you. The kind of power you have never known will come upon you tonight in Jesus' name. Greater grace and higher grace and deeper grace coming into your life tonight in Jesus' name. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, we're reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Look at verse 15. 15. In verse 15, looking diligently. You see, to overcome temptation, we need to look diligently. Look at our hearts diligently. Look at our minds diligently. Examine our habits diligently. Examine the, the line we're following diligently. Examine the things we've been doing that will land us, will make us weaker will make this temptation stronger. It says, diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Let's go to verse 16 there. In verse 16, it tells us, it says, lest, any, lest there be any fornicator, a profane person as Esau, as Esau. Esau didn't understand. He was not watching over his birthright. Esau was not watching against the temptation that might come. All right, you want the lentils? Sell me your birthright. He was not watching. And unfortunately, he saw did not have anybody watching over him. The, the mother was not watching over Esau. All the mother was watching over was her dream. The dream she had when she conceived Esau and Jacob. And Isaac was not watching over Esau. All Isaac was watching was the venison that he ate. And because of that, his soul was left unprotected. Who is watching over you? Well, your pastor here ought to be watching over you. But when last, they will cross each other on the way. When last, did you speak to me? When last, did I speak to you? Am I watching over you? Obey, obey them that have the rule over you. For they watch for your soul as they that must give account that they might do it with joy and not with grief. When last did you allow me to watch over you? And while I'm trying to watch over you in preaching, and I make the details so clear in my ministry of watching over you, are you not offended? Why is he talking like that? And why is he so clear? Why is he so detailed? I'm doing my work. I'm watching over you. And Esau did not have a father to watch over him, a mother to watch over him. And Jacob, his twin brother, was not watching over him. All Jacob was watching is how I can get that birthright from him. And so, look at him, just left like that. He himself was not watching over himself. No father, no mother, no brother, no pastor, no preacher. What 
watching over him. And when the temptation came, okay, sell me your birthright. He said, all right, take it. What am I going to do with the birthright? I'm dying of hunger. In your life, watch. That's how we overcome in your life. And if you have somebody like me to talk to you and to preach to you and to explain to you and to say, looks like there's carelessness here. Looks like there's temptation there. And I'm trying to watch over you. And you're shaking your head and you're dodging and you're turning the other way. And you don't even want to, you, know, you don't want to say, hello, pastor, uh, this is my life and this is what I'm going through and what you are talking about. About, uh, you know that day you were talking on temptation it's like you knew me and you were talking about me and you surrender yourself so that we can watch over you I pray you will not be lost I said you will not be lost uh, you know sometimes uh, when I'm you know when I come on I mention uh, young people I mention children I mention youth I mention choir I mention almost everybody so that I can watch over you the people that get offended uh -uh, what's, what's happening to the pastor this new year mentioning this and mentioning that okay if it's like that and then uh, they react when you react like that you're saying pastor go your way read your bible and preach what you want to preach but don't apply the bible to me you are not watching over me i don't allow you to watch over me you'll be like esau that had nobody watching over him come back come back come back if you're still part of the congregation i'm going to watch over you i said i'm going to watch over you you push me this way, push me that way. I'll say, Father, forgive her, forgive him. He knows not, she knows not what he's doing. Otherwise, how will you push the driver out of the moving vehicle? Otherwise, how will you uh, kind of remove the belt and push the pilot out of the plane? You don't want to die, you will not die. We will keep watching over you. Our pastors will keep watching over you. Our preachers will keep on watching over you. And I hope our preachers will not become so afraid and so timid that we cannot watch over the sheep, the members the Lord has given us. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for a morsel of meat sold is birthright you will not sell your birthright we come to point number three point number three we're looking at godliness through prayer and perseverance against temptation prayer perseverance against temptation if we will pray god will protect us god will preserve us and God will deliver us from the tempter in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 26, we're looking at verse 41. Watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's prayer that will then bring up the flesh in strength to match the level of the willingness of the spirit so that temptation and sin will not overcome us, will not overcome you. Tonight, we're going to pray, you're going to pray and I'm going to pray to you so that all the roots and the directions of temptation in the past tonight will become overcomers in Jesus name and the grace to overcome and the godliness that God will plant in your heart so that you will now from now on resist the devil and he will flee from you the Lord grant unto every one of us tonight in Jesus name let's rise up now and mightily cry unto the Lord and talk to the Lord from the depths of our heart. Appreciate the direct message. Appreciate the direct warning. Appreciate.
the direct application of the word of God to your heart and to your life and say, Lord, I need grace. Lord, I need grace. Godliness. You are the God who protects, the God who preserves from every form of temptation. Stop seeing and stop giving that wrong statement as if God is tempting me. God is the one enticing me to do evil. You know that's not right. Take that statement off your mouth and say, Lord, I know when temptation comes, it's not you, it's Satan, it's the devil, it's Lucifer, it's missed heaven, and he's looking for people that will join him to go to hell. That's why it's bringing the temptation. That's why it's bringing the allurement of the world. That's why it's bringing and presenting what will destroy you. It's presenting the poison as pleasure. Call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. I surrender. I submit myself to you. Look at the source of that temptation. Look at the root, the route, the pathway of that temptation as it's coming. And you're telling the Lord, oh Lord, I recognize that. I realize that. I see that. That's how it comes. Then it weakens your heart, weakens your mind, weakens your life, weakens your resolve. But you want to tell the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a pastor watching over me. As one that will give account, I want to yield to the teaching. I want to yield to the instruction so that he will do it with joy, not to agree, but that is unprofitable for you. Tell the Lord, surrender yourself to the Lord. And examine the lust of the flesh. Examine the pride of life. Examine all those gadgets, these modern gadgets that you use and you only weaken your Christian life. Check up. I promise the Lord. Don't allow the gadgets to take away the Bible from your hand from your heart to take away your devotion to take away your total surrender and submission to the Lord don't allow that and don't allow all the social media news Pornography and those things that attract your attention. Don't allow that to take away your consecration, your resolve, and to weaken your commitment to the Lord and your commitment to your home. Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. 
you still have the same consecration that you had many years ago? The same response to the word of God that you had many years ago? Do you still have that? The same submission of heart to the word of God that you had many years ago, are you now judging the message, evaluating the message, classifying the message? That's not why you came. You came so that God can find you out, fish you out, help you to discover where you stand. Yes, I know, but why is he talking like that? I don't want him to talk. I don't want him to be afraid, to fidget. Want him not to speak out of conviction? How do you want him to talk? Go back to the cross. Say, Lord, here I am. I give myself, I surrender myself completely unto you. Let him wash you, let him purge you, let him purify you. Temptation can ruin if you yield to it. Temptation will cause death if you yield to it. It will bring spiritual death, separate you from God. It will bring sad, sorrowful death, sudden death. If you yield to it, and if you don't have a chance to repent before you die, and you keep on with the lying and the lying and the lying and the deception, and pushing away your teacher, pushing away the leader that will tell you the truth if you die in that condition. It will be like Esau. Mother not watching over him, only watching over her dream. Father not watching over him, only watching the food that Esau will give as a hunter. Jacob not watching over him, just watching for the birthright. And he too, hunter, 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 not watching over himself. And after all, there is spiritual death. There is a sad, sudden, sorrowful death. There is a second death. Get all the grace you need. God says, my grace sufficient for you. Get God on your side. That he'll protect you, preserve you every time. But you will not go in the direction of temptation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pray. 
pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray with faith. Pray with expectation that he'll make you strong. Let him establish you once again in godliness. A godly heart. A godly mind. A godly lifestyle. Free. Free from sin. God grant you grace to deliver you. He'll preserve you unto his heavenly kingdom. Whosoever comes, I will in no wise drive him away. He loves you. He doesn't want you to drown in the ocean of temptation. Love yourself too. And tell the Lord, your love, protect me. Don't listen to the lies of other people. I'll be merely listening to the lie of Abraham. To the lie of Sarah, he is my brother, she is my sister. And then Abimelech took her. Don't listen to the lies of people. I just like you, I don't have any intention. Don't listen to their lies. Be holy. Your heart, your thought, your mind, be holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You want to see the Lord, don't you? That's why you came. Don't forget to heaven. That's why you came. Even the righteous man, the righteous minister has to smite you. That will be oil. That will be joy for you. Even if we have to drag you to heaven, that will be joy for you. Surrender to the mercy, to the word. And say, Lord, do whatever you have to do to make me holy, to preserve me in holiness, so that when the trumpet shall sound, I will not be left behind. He answers prayer. When you seek him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, he gives grace, more grace, more grace. When you seek him in honesty, faithfully seeking all the grace you need to live to please him. Watch and pray. 
not only prayer, watch. Watch and pray. And if your local pastor is watching over you, accept. Don't isolate yourself. And if your GS is watching over you, accept. Don't dodge the message. Don't act as if I'm all right. Give the chance to watch over you. In Jesus' name we pray. Have you prayed? I said, have you prayed? God has answered your prayer. More grace in Jesus' name. More strength in Jesus' name. More vigilance in Jesus' name. The Lord protect you. The Lord preserve you. The Lord perfect whatever is lacking in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for making it so plain that anyone hearing can read, can hear, and run. Lord, we thank you for your love and revealing your mind, your heart unto us as to the source of temptation, as to the ruinousness of temptation, and as to the grace and the power made available so that we can overcome. Lord, I pray new strength, new power, more grace, abundant life will come to every one of us Make us overcome in Jesus' name. And for those who have trod the path of hide and seek for such a long time, and no pastor now is allowed to watch over them, no leader, no preacher is allowed to watch over them. Lord, recover everyone to the path of restoration and righteousness in Jesus' name. All the pranks and all the satanic method that will shield themselves away from the leader, from the pastor, from their overseer, from the general superintendent, so that nobody is watching over them and they want to be lost in the wilderness of temptation and sin. Lord, recover everyone in Jesus' name. And the pastors have become so fearful, so timid, and they fret and fidget, 
and they cannot even talk to members anymore. They cannot watch over members anymore. They cannot watch over the youth, over the adults, over the workers, full time or part time, because they have been told, stay away. I don't want any, anybody watching over me. Oh Lord, I pray on those on scriptural attitudes, cancel in our church in Jesus' name. The boldness and conviction of a true shepherd grant unto all our leaders and the submission and the absolute surrender of the sheep in the fold grant to all the members in Jesus name those who are falling lift them up those who are backsliding restore them those who are weak strengthen them and those who are at the verge of backsliding, hold them and pull them back in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray everyone that has become an Esau, only watching for material things, and the spiritual life is gone. Oh Lord, restore, recover every Esau today in Jesus' name. Anointing that breaks every yoke. Break every yoke in every life in Jesus' name. That entrenched disobedience of the word of God, O oh Lord, uproot it from every heart in Jesus' name. And Lord, raise us up and lift us up so that we can walk in righteousness and holiness every moment, every day for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Confirm the truth in every life. Confirm the grace in every life. Confirm your protecting power in every life in Jesus' name. We're going back home in victory. We're going back home with triumph. And we're more than conquerors, everyone, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.